this year, we're taking a journey through the whole Old Testament, one book each week seeking God's great purpose for the world. All the details can be found at goldhill.org forward slash ggp. This week, we're looking at the book of Ecclesiastes, and the resources we've made are at goldhill.org forward slash Ecclesiastes. Most likely written by King Solomon in about 935 BC, the book contains the thoughts and musings of a man who has lived and experienced much of life. Life has caused him to ask many questions, and the wisdom he has has at times left him flummoxed. He's vexed by the meaning of things, and it's like his frustration is tangible, like the frustration wants to step off the page and into our world today. But then, why shouldn't it? If we strip back the layers of technology and political correctness and all the other things we can use to mask our lives, we're still left with the same kinds of questions today. Why do the wicked flourish when righteous people can often struggle? Why does wealth not equal satisfaction? The author of Ecclesiastes has built much and accomplished great things, but he appears not satisfied. Everything is meaningless. All is vanity. It's all a chasing after the wind, he says. Like a broken record, these phrases appear time and again throughout the book. I wonder if it's because of language and thoughts like this that it's easy to see why the book of Ecclesiastes can be described as heavy, described as negative and maybe even slightly depressing. But here's my favourite part. This vexation and confusion about life and its issues is given a frame of reference throughout the book. Having delved deeply, the author is forced to return to the one truth he knows above all else. God. When it all gets too much. God. When you have it all but are still not satisfied. God. Whether our questions about life start with God or without him, the author of Ecclesiastes has learnt that they always lead to him. So is God at the centre of all we are and all we do? Ecclesiastes is a book of hope. It's a book of humility and reverence and one that engages some of the big questions of life. But it's also a ginormous signpost that says the answer's not here, it's with someone else. So may I encourage you to read all of Ecclesiastes if you can in one sitting, because it makes so much more sense. I hope you, that you too can sense that, that hope that overcomes the darkness and despair that life can at times bring. And I pray that as we look more closely at this book, our eyes will be opened again to the hope given to us by Jesus Christ. So come and join us this Sunday morning at Gold Hill Baptist Church, either in person or online, as we look more deeply at what God has to say to us through this remarkable book.